Where did you come from? Late one night, a man awakens to the sound of a crash downstairs. No, it, it sounded like someone broke a window or, or a door. Fearful that someone has broken in and concerned for the safety of his sleeping wife and infant child, he goes to investigate. Dory, help me, okay? Just stay upstairs with Sarah, okay? Call the police if you hear anything. As the man heads downstairs, he catches a glimpse of a strange figure in the kitchen. An entrance to inside. Gateways to other worlds. Now, I'm trapped with an evil I am yet to understand. MDP-TV is really unique, even amongst FNAF VHS series. Spanning over 40 episodes, it mixes more traditional VHS tropes with a premise similar to that of the increasingly popular SCP Project, a clandestine organization specializing in the procurement and containment of the inexplicable comes into possession of strange animatronics, and hilarity ensues. <laughs> I'm just kidding, MDP-TV is actually really intense from an emotional standpoint, more so than any of its contemporaries, and it really focuses on the psychological impact of Afton's crimes and the events surrounding FNAF. We see firsthand how twisted Afton has become within the confines of his metal prison. We witness the guilt that Michael experiences for his failure to prevent his father from constantly coming back. Why can't I just die? We see the wrath of Elizabeth Afton in the form of Scrap Baby, and we see the insanity of Ennard as they struggle with multiple personalities, ripping them apart as they each tug in different directions. I just want to rest, Freddy. Meet you, Foxy. The MD Foundation wants you to know that these puppies and kittens demand that you subscribe to Theft King. If you don't subscribe to Theft King, you hate these puppies and kittens. You don't hate these puppies and kittens, do you? The series begins with an anonymous recording of someone walking through a massive, brutalist concrete structure. The liminal backroom's influence is pretty apparent. Whoever is holding the camera reaches a massive hallway full of countless doors when suddenly... Upon fleeing into the doorway, they find themselves in a strange room with checkerboard patterns on the walls. Slumped over and lying against one of them is the animatronic, Springtrap. Upon arriving at the location, agents of the Foundation locate Springtrap, as well as the camcorder that this footage was taken with. Springtrap is placed in containment and put under surveillance. While he initially appears animalistic, they do note that he seems to be saying a few words. <laughs> However, when they send Agent Dennis Crane to interview him, they find that they aren't having much luck. Why were you in a sealed off room inside the Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria? Do you know how long you were in that room for? The Foundation goes to take a biopsy of the strange organic material mixed with Springtrap circuitry, but when Agent White goes to make the incision... Creating a very small incision now. I've breached the flesh cavity. I am... <laughs> They interview Springtrap again, but the robot is still mostly unresponsive, frustrating them. You can play the silent game all you want. We know you have the ability to speak. We know you have consciousness. They have him under constant surveillance, and they know that he's able to communicate. <laughs> Fed up with their lack of success, the Foundation decides to try a different approach. Huh? Well, we're gonna try something different. End it here. Three weeks into Springtrap's containment, Agent Crane is finally able to get the creature to respond to some of their questions. What is your name? Oh, 
Do you know why you refused to this metal chef? <laughs> What is a spring lock? Every single nerve held within what is left of you is burnt out, meaning it's literally impossible for you to feel pain. Four days later, they interview him again, and Springtrap cooperates. They're able to piece together that Afton wasn't always inside the suit, and they ask him how he ended up this way. I was often haunted, chased, I wanted revenge. I hid Chased by who? Why were you in a sealed off room inside the Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria? Having heard Springtrap muttering their names over and over, Agent Crane follows up by asking who Henry and Michael are. You were seen hitting the door and calling names of a Michael and Henry. Who are these people to you? He also learns more of the nature of Springtrap's condition. Spring Bonnie. Is this the name of the suit? <laughs> a trap. A trap. Like a spring trap. However, when Agent Crane asks why Springtrap refused to answer their questions for so long and is only now cooperating, how come you are responding to these questions now? I don't think you realize how difficult- And I don't think you people realize how difficult it is for me to respond to you know how it feels to have your foot torn apart. Well, I'll Following up on the leads obtained from their interviews, the Foundation locates Michael Afton, who had been living in a sewer, a reference to the events of Sister Location. Upon learning that the organization was in possession of his father, William Afton, Michael allows himself to be taken into custody in exchange for a chance to speak with him. When asked how he and his father ended up in such weird situations, Michael goes into details. How exactly are you both still alive? The amount of physical damage caused to you both should be well impossible to survive. I don't exactly know. My father did something back at the old restaurant. Something truly awful. I, his children were going missing and then my sister died. Then my little brother. My mother went missing and now my father. I, I've been searching for him this whole time. I, I have so much I need to ask him. I really love Michael's depiction in this series. You'd think that literally making him a purple person with glowing eyes would be sort of silly, but it actually works. He's just this pathetic, broken man, and I think that's a cool, realistic take on the character. The most important thing that the agent learns from this interview, though, is that William and Michael are not the only ones. No, I suggest you talk to the others. They might remember more than me. Others? Uh, yes, there are more like me out there. The, the animatronics, almost all of them are alive and, and lonely. Some of them just want a friend, some want to kill, and some just want to die. And what do you want? Answers, then, then death. Two days later, the Foundation performs a follow-up interview with Michael, where he explains a bit more regarding how he ended up this way. How exactly 
did they do this to you? They used me as a means of escape. Tricked me and led me into the skipping room. Having assessed Michael, the Foundation finally allows him to meet with his father. Before we allow you to talk with your father, I think it's only humane of me to tell you that he's not the man you once knew. Father? It, it's me. Your, your son. Michael. As Springtrap becomes enraged, the Foundation detonates several EMPs in an attempt to subdue him. Unfortunately, as we know, the suit is powered by Remnant, not electricity, and even worse, the EMPs knocked out critical facility security features, allowing Springtrap to escape. M Michael, are you, are you okay? M Michael, did someone get a stretcher in here? No, I don't. It won't work. There's nothing left to fix. I'm already dead. In the wake of their ill-fated interview, Michael is broken, both physically and psychologically. He spends hours just crying alone in his cell. He questions how that thing could really be his father. <laughs> Agent Crane goes to interview Michael again, but upon seeing how upset he is, he goes off script. You know what? No need in these typical formalities. Uh, I'm truly sorry for what happened, Michael. After giving Michael a few days to recuperate, Agent Crane goes to interview Michael once again. However, Springtrap is on the loose, and that's the top priority. Agent Crane asks Michael if he has any idea where his father might have gone. Do you know where he might be, or where he might be heading to? I think... No, I don't. Sometime after escaping, Springtrap is captured on public security camera footage walking down the back alley of a f chain. While the Foundation is concerned with the threat he poses to the civilian population, they're also worried that the exposure to the outside environment might damage the animatronic, which would potentially throw a wrench in their plans for this. Next, we see the clip of the man encountering Springtrap in his kitchen. With the entity having now murdered an innocent family, pressure begins to mount to recapture it. The Foundation needs to preserve its secrecy. Michael, hey, can I come in? We see Agent Crane entering Michael's room, but things seem different. It isn't a formal interview, there's no table. It's almost like Agent Crane is operating independently of the Foundation here. Your father, he... Yesterday night, he killed a family. As soon as the Foundation agent comes across him, he will be shot on sight. Please, you can't. I need to try. Let me try and fix this. Michael, I have... No say in this. At the end of their meeting, Agent Crane says something sort of strange. Even in the darkest of tunnels, they lead to light, Michael. You just need to, you know, push it open. I... Oh. Mm -hmm. I expect this will be the last time we talk. Either you will take the tunnel, or I will be replaced and likely have my mind wiped or shot. In the next video, we see security camera footage of Michael pushing open the vent in his room and escaping the facility through it.
If it wasn't obvious, Agent Crane helped Michael escape, although I find it hard to believe that the Foundation would ever allow such an obvious security flaw in their facilities, but whatever. In the wake of this, the Foundation is torn. While Agent Crane is facing disciplinary action for his role in enabling Michael's escape, some agents feel that he's the best at what he does, that he's the only one who can resolve this and recapture Springtrap. Agent Crane is currently being demoted in rank as a result of his actions with Michael. Why exactly is he being removed? He's the best at what he does. However, as all of this transpires, a new animatronic materializes into their world. Golden Freddy. With the arrival of yet another entity, the Foundation recognizes that Agent Crane's expertise is still required, at least for the time being. You will actively assist in the locating and entrapment of William and Michael Afton. Upon successful entrapment, you will have your memory wiped with Class 5 memory drugs and removed from the Foundation with no pension. The first interview with Golden Freddy goes as expected. The robot just sits there, unresponsive. Do you have a name? Okay. Can you explain how you manifested here? Uh, how exactly did you do that? Uh, what do you want? Uh, okay, I think we're gonna put this on hold. Fortunately, the Foundation has acquired a new lead. They found the sister location facility. While there isn't too much to note, what is peculiar is that Michael Afton's remains seem to have been preserved despite him having apparently been scooped years ago. Furthermore, they also managed to locate blueprints for the Funtime animatronics like Circus Baby and Ballora. Using these clues, they're able to locate the remains of Ennard, who they take into custody. They begin to examine and prepare the bizarre animatronic for disassembly when... Starting. <laughs> Once again, they call in the expert, Agent Crane. Why did you kill that man? They were attacking us. Uh, well, fair point. Do, do you have a name? A uh, lovely name. Uh, a nerd. I think we got off on the wrong foot here. We've had nothing but bad experiences with animatronics so far. After? William, you, you know? A song. When Ennard explains how death follows Afton like a song, it catches Agent Crane off guard. Michael had also explained that he heard the same sort of song in his head, pulling him towards Springtrap. It's as if a song is playing in my head, a lullaby that gets louder and quieter depending on where I am. Could this be some kind of signal calling you? Maybe, I, I'm not sure. Agent Crane tries to make an arrangement with Ennard, but the animatronic makes a grisly demand. Yes, he was here, but not anymore. Shame. We have much The Foundation makes an arrangement to provide Ennard with food in exchange for their cooperation. Okay, right. Then, what do you want in return for information? Wait, wait, I... I don't think I... Okay, okay. I, uh... Something could be arranged. Something can be arranged. Ennard is dope in this series, by the way. We get this awesome scene of the fun times arguing amongst themselves from within Ennard's single body, and it's just really well done. Dang it, Laura! You can't keep doing this to us! Yeah, these people can help. She's acting like circus baby! These people could do good for us, but no, you just want to be the big scary monster they see us at. 
Funtime Freddy wants to cooperate with the Foundation and cease this needless killing, whereas Ballora is still rather vicious. As soon as they get what they want, they will destroy us. Funtime Foxy tries to stay neutral, though he seems to be leaning towards Freddy's point of view. Hmm. I have a point here. What? Don't take her side, but they will. Agent Crane is sent in to interview Golden Freddy, explaining that the suit could be repaired in order to restore its mobility. Surprisingly, for the first time, the animatronic speaks. All we ask in return is answers to our Okay. Thank you. Golden Freddy's appearance was preceded by the sound of a music box playing. Both Michael and Dennard reported that they felt drawn to Springtrap by some sort of music, and Agent Crane speculates that Golden Freddy has been as well. Where did you come from? When we asked you uh, what it was you wanted, the radio in here activated and started playing some kind of song, a lullaby. Did you create this signal? No. By any chance, do you think this signal is pulling you? Metaphorically or even physically, to a specific location. Yes. What do you think that will reveal? In a follow-up interview with Ennard, Agent Crane questions them on the nature of their multiple personalities. It's been made clear that there is perhaps three different conscious personalities within you. What are your names? I'm from Time Foxy. I'm Time Freddy. And I'm guessing the one who is most in control is Ballora or Ennard? I'd suggest leaving Ballora out of this. Why? She doesn't trust you. Circus Baby was Afton's daughter. She was. Wait, wait, wait. What? Afton? William Afton's daughter? Yes. But you said she was once a part of you. She's an animatronic. She was once Afton's daughter. But like all of us, she was contorted into a monster. Poor girl, forced to haunt the very machine that killed her. With these revelations, Agent Crane finally begins to put the pieces together. My god, you are all the missing children. All of the animatronics. They... Oh god. Having finally discovered the truth around the missing children and Afton's crimes, Agent Crane once again speaks with Golden Freddy to try and learn more. However, unlike the other animatronics, they seem to have already been aware of this. They don't seem to care much about their former life, however, having been consumed by their desire for revenge. Evidence supports that these animatronics uh, are the missing children and that they have somehow had their minds, personalities, or souls trapped within these robotic designs. I'm sorry to say this, but it's likely you also fit in this scenario. I remember everything. I know who I am, oh I was. So, you are also a victim. Irrelevant. What do you remember of your life before this? Irrelevant. What was the last thing you remember before waking up within this animatronic? A mouth? What do you mean, a, a human mouth? An animal? Freddy! As in the same animatronic that you are currently... Yes! Do you remember your name? <laughs> By any chance, does the year 1983 mean anything to you? Irrelevant. However, Agent Crane has a trick up his sleeve. It turns out he knew more about Golden Freddy's past than he had been letting on. Well, I didn't want to do this, but... In the year 1983, there was an accident. An accident that led to a child being put into a coma and then later death. This was William Afton's youngest son. This conversation. His son was brutally and severely injured by one of the animatronics due to a prank gone wrong, including his own brother, Michael Afton, and friends. For the remainder of that boy's life, he lied on a hospital bed with horrifying brain activity that highly suggested that the boy was being tormented and perhaps even tortured by their own subconscious as their mind collapses in on itself. While his father could do nothing but sit with him and cry. <laughs> In what is becoming a pattern, the Foundation gets word of yet another animatronic, and they send a SWAT team in to retrieve it. As you can imagine, things go super well. There she is. Mm -hmm. 
It looks totally different from the images and posters we saw. I wonder how Afton did it. Afton? Whoa, holy shit. Rubs, stand back. Wait, no, hold on. I think, I think it's okay. Um, I'm Agent Mark Robs. I'm here to help you. Help? Why would I need help? I know things. I know how it's been hard for you. And I'm with people who want to figure it all out. People who want to help. Robs, I don't like this. David, just wait. Your friend doesn't want to help. He wants to kill. Not at all. Just scared. You are lying. Why shouldn't I just kill the both of you now? Because I know who you are. It would seem I already know who I am. You, you do? I'm the one who's going to give you both a very painful death. You're William Fashion's daughter. Your name is Elizabeth Afton. Talk. You died? Or guess? You were killed by the very machinery you were stuck in. After that, your soul just, just never left. You're lost. You just want to help make things right. My father. Afton? It's, it's... I... I remember. Take me to him. I can do that. In time. Just please... Don't... If I wanted that, you'd be dead already. I trust you. No. If you are lying. But for now, perhaps... Circus Baby has very little recollection of her prior life, or perhaps she doesn't want to remember it. The interview goes on for over 90 minutes, but Agent Crane hasn't made much progress. Frustrated, one of his superiors calls him outside the room. Crane, I need to speak with you in private. In the wake of this unsuccessful interview, the Foundation decides that drastic action has become necessary. They approach Ennard again, this time with the suggestion of a meeting between them and Circus Baby. We found Circus Baby, Elizabeth Afton. You are She will kill all of you. Initially, they're resistant to the idea, but in time, Agent Crane is able to turn them around. We could give it a try. Are you sure? Freddy. Furthermore, it turns out that Ennard had been led to believe that Michael was William and that he was dead. When they find out the truth, Foxy and Freddy earnestly want to help Michael, but Ballora is reluctant. That was actually William Afton's son, um, Michael Afton. The man you killed wasn't William, it was Michael. I'm sorry to say this, but you killed the wrong person. This is cannot be true. We, I, give me Jesus. Ultimately, Ennard agrees to the interview. I vote yes. I suppose it's a yes from me too. Looks like that's the majority. I'll schedule a meeting for in a few days. Nothing will come of this. Circus Baby is interviewed yet again, but not by Agent Crane. The latter has been taken off Baby's assignment due to his overly sympathetic nature and replaced with General Hull, who... He's kind of a dick. The room is filled with built-in shot buttons. These will be used to awaken the entity. The interrogation will now begin. My apologies, but you can be quite stubborn. I will kill you for that. General Hull busts out the scooper and uses it to threaten Circus Baby, torturing the animatronic for information. The scooper. So, you remember it. But I should need to remind you what it can do. What do you want from me? A few questions. Answer them properly and nobody gets hurt. Why did Ennard kick you out? Why did Ennard kick you out? They found my means. Midway through the interview, though, Agent Crane intervenes. 
You had an opportunity and it yielded nothing. This is my operation. Circus Baby is damaged, and an internal MD Foundation review of the incident occurs. General Hall has been removed from the interview scene by a joint research team vote. You will now purely be dedicated to facility external agent control. MDPTV is still ongoing, but the channel is literally like a handful of subs away from 100,000, so please go over there and give them a sub after this. It's a really cool series, and they really deserve it.